A hardcore action. Oh, that's fucking epic. Horrible. Did you, WrestleMania is Sunday. Did you get that feeling watching the show? I got the feeling that Velocity might be on. It starts off with Stang, who's actually talking. A week before WrestleMania, he decides to talk. Oh, I'm sorry, he talked last week on the network. Um. <sighs> Cole tells us to use the hashtag Stang. <laughs> So he talks about how he's going to punch... <laughs> Why? What does that mean? I don't know. He's going to punch Triple H. Then Stephanie comes out. And Cole and JBL remind us, Ha ha! She's the daughter of Vince McMahon! And I believe she's also the husband of the game. Yeah, I think that stinks to try to shove that bat up her uh, giant vagina. <laughs> Big <gonna> flappy <laughs> vagina. <sighs> she says that, Stang, I think you're intimidated. And then... She tries to slap him, and then he grabs her hand, and then here's something really exciting that happened. Triple H came out, grabbed a sledgehammer, and then walked away, <laughs> and the segment ended. <laughs> WrestleMania is Sunday. You think he'd pick up a... Ah, oh, but we're reminded after the segment to download the app. Oh, it's your gateway to the network. Because very exciting things happen on the app, like Cody Rhodes and Dolph Ziggler cutting great promos, John. Wrestling form. Oh, promos, promos of the year. So, Luke, Luke Ambrose and R-Truth versus Stardust and Luke Ambrose with Wade boring on commentary. No one even pretended to care about this match. At, at the end of the match, right, R-Truth and D Ambrose are in the ring. And they start dancing together. <laughs> ah, he's a little corgi. This really builds for the WrestleMania match, right? <laughs> Is it going to be a six-man dance-off, John? Von <laughs> Mackel! <laughs> Dean Ambrose's character is supposed to be he's this wild, unhinged badass. And all we've seen from him is goofy shit. He, he sprays mustard at people. He wants a hot dog, John. He grabs the nuts of people with tongs and he dances with sellout Uncle Tom's. <laughs> that remark was for you, Dom. But that whole rant was for Eddie. We love you. Oh, but don't worry because the Special Olympics teams are on the ramp because WWE loves retarded people <laughs> because they write the shows oh, for us. Oh, man. Well, I wonder simple. if there's any retarded kids up there for Diet do. Oh, that's, that took a turn. <laughs> that's really dark. Uncle Jerry. <laughs> he takes advantage of special needs children. Ugh. Kiss the magic onions. Ugh. We get a Roman Reigns video package, and he's being interviewed by Byron Sexton, and no one cares. Byron Sexton t still takes 20-foot cattle prods up his ass, so I don't give a shit. Believe that. Oh, the Sodomy crew is interviewing Will Ferrell and that talentless piece of shit, unfunny fuck Kevin Hart. Oh, I love Kevin Hart! He's from the Hart family! Why? WrestleMania's on Sunday! He didn't do something! <laughs> So, Richard Simmons comes out, and he's on commentary for a ten-man tag match. And there's a lot of uh, guest stars on Raw. A bunch of jobbers. All the commentators could talk about was Richard Simmons, and I don't even know who the fuck this guy is or what he's from. Oh, but after the match, they, they, they ask him to tell the audience why he likes the WWE Network. <laughs> and then he poorly reads off the script. He's like, well, <clears throat> I like the network because... I can get all of the pay-per-views for the low, low price of nine ninety nine, And you can bill me twice in the same... I what? <laughs> Boner Snake then came out, right? Hello. And Cole says that at Mania, he's going to finally get his hands on Seth Rollins. He's beat him up two weeks in a row. <laughs> but at Mania, he's going to finally get his hands on him. And then tonight, guess what? He's fighting Seth Rollins and J&J &J in a handicap match. And he gets his hands on Seth Rollins tonight. <laughs> he slithers, humps the floor, and wins. <laughs> and then Cole goes, yeah, but at Mania, he's finally going to get his hands on him. He says it again after the match. <laughs> Did you watch the match? He just got his hands on him. And why the fuck are you booking it so that every WrestleMania match has to happen on Raw every week before WrestleMania? I believe that's more exciting that way, Taz. Oh, but you'll never see The Undertaker. 
Or the Vigilante Stang. We get a WWE.com interview segment with Sena, and he cuts the promo about how I, I wear my heart on my sleeve. And, you know, he loves the military. <laughs> and then he says, at WrestleMania, you're going to see the other side of me. The one, blah, blah, blah. It's that same bullshit. Oh, I'm going to be tough this time. I can wrestle. <laughs> so, Miss Purdy and a Holocaust survivor are backstage talking about something. And then they have a match against the cunt, and then something happened, and I don't care. Why the fuck should I? Stop giving the divas a chance, because they're terrible. Just make Paige take all her clothes off and just shuffle. Oh, rack attack! 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 Oh, yeah! Rack attack! So Snoop Lion comes out, surrounded <laughs> by horribly unattractive women. He's promoting his new song called Bush, which was dedicated <laughs> to Lily and Garcia. <laughs> This is the go home show for WrestleMania, and we have to endure Snoop Lion cutting a promo on Curtis Axel. This was, as far as unnecessary guest segments go, this one was pretty funny because he brought Hulk Hogan out. Snoop Lion is a part timer burying WrestleMania. <laughs> Hulk Hogan made a, a weed joke, and Snoop Lion laughed hysterically. At least Snoop Lion likes wrestling. Yeah. Snoop Lion has really good mic skills, especially yes. compared to everyone on the roster today. Hogan and Snoop Dogg beat the shit out of Curtis Axel. And I thought that was moderately enjoyable. This is a good segment for, like, you know, the time of year when no one's watching. When you're trying to build for WrestleMania, can you try doing that? Instead of just having WrestleMania matches on Raw, followed by Snoop Dogg and Richard Simmons. Oh, but we get a six-man interspecies match now, <laughs> featuring five human beings and an orangutan named Natalia. <laughs> Team Cum versus Zoro the Gay Blades were the combatants, if you didn't get the, the joke. And um, the Usos were on commentary. You eating it! And uh, I believe Jimmy's wife, Naomi, was also there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I watched this match? No, I didn't. As soon as I heard them say interspecies, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> So then Hardware Store owner Kane tells Wade Barrett to give up his title because I have to hang it on the ring. And he goes, I don't want to give up my title. And then Kane goes, if you don't give your belt to me, I'm stripping you of the title. And I'm like, what's the fucking difference if he strips him of the title now? He still has to go up and win it. Like, who, it makes absolutely <laughs> all, unless he wants to defend it. I made it at Superstars or SmackDown. Oh, those like, which again shows. makes no difference because no one watches those. I don't think Main Event is around anymore. Really? I haven't seen it on the network. Swagger vs. Rusev. Oh, wow. Remember when this was the greatest feud ever? My sources tell me that there is a <laughs> dissension between Rusev and Lana. Is there? Is that why? I thought they just took her out to film a shitty movie. No, he said there was dissension because of what happened when Cena put Rusev in the, in the accolade. The accolade! Or the STF, whatever the fuck it was. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why that would make dissension. Never. Not only was there no Lana, but there was no Zeb. Did Rey Mysterio just murder everyone's managers? <laughs> like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> Yeah, my Needless to say, Jack Swagger ended Rusev's undefeated streak in a five-star classic. And then Cena came out for no reason. I'm gonna beat your ass! And started beating up Rusev, and the announcers are fine with this. But then when Rusev starts defending him, himself, they're like, Ah, oh, no! Ah, oh, no! Ah, oh, no! Ah, oh, no! God, no! Oh, somebody, I need some help! Oh, I'll the eyes. All in the eyes. Uh, eyes on hinge. If, if I, I wasn't I like, looking, like, stop. If I wasn't looking at the screen, I would envision Rusev like hiding under the apron, looking at Cena. Because all I heard was he's stalking him. He's just stalking the Cena. Eyes. He's looking at his eyes. He's stalking him. And then when you look at the screen, he's violently punching him over the face. How is that stalking? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> So then he puts him on the announce table and puts him in the accolade because I guess it hurts more on the announce table. <laughs> and 35 doctors come out and calls him, Get him off! Come on, get him off! Get him off! <laughs> Extra meatloaf in his voice. Get him off! Get him off, guys! Get him off! <laughs> God, can I get him out by here? Hey, doctor! And he only addressed John. Like, Booker T was like, Oh, John, what are you going to do, John? Oh, what's going on, John? John, you got to help John. Like, Booker T is standing right there. He's better than John. Talk to Booker. John has Alzheimer's and he's garbage. Horrible segment. <laughs> this was just an excuse to make Cena more injured, so I got more to overcome and not give up to it, Mania. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, but scary! Undertaker's not here, so I should give a shit! We want Taker chance in Sue. Kevin Nash is getting into the Hall of Fame. This is long overdue. <laughs> the guy coined the term vanilla midget. Just for that, you should have been in the Hall of Fame. 
I don't get why he goes in, but Scott Hall has to go in as Razor Ramon. I mean, you know what? It is what it is, right? At least he got in. Natty and Tyson do product placement for Burger King, because that's important for WrestleMania. And Paul Blart Mall Cop 2 is being made. Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. They're remaking Point Break. They just made the seventh Fast and the Furious movie. Can we get some new movies? Oh no, but then they make shit like Boyhood and Birdman. So it's like, no, stop making movies. Just stop making movies, because everything that comes out is garbage. <laughs> oh, but Birdman was great and won Best Picture, and goddamn Boyhood took 12 years to make. Wonderful. Nothing is as good as Jumper. <laughs> Back to the Future 3 when you need it. So, Cropper fought Ziggler with Luke Ambrose as the guest referee. I literally didn't watch one second of this match. <clears throat> the only reason I know Ziggler won is because I heard his fucking garbage theme song play. But I hate his Well, I guess Ziggler won. Okay. Woke me up from my stasis. And then all of the fucking retards came out from the ladder match. And JBL reminds us, you can use ladders as weapons! And I resumed not watching. I don't <laughs> give a shit. So Lesnar and Heyman came out for the big confrontation between Lesnar and Reigns. The whole thing was Heyman riding Lesnar's dick, and then Reigns came out and tried to grab the belt. Here's what happened. Roman Reigns walks out to a chorus of boos. <laughs> Lesnar holds up the belt. Reigns grabs it, and then Lesnar grabs it, and the show fades to black with them tugging war for the belt. That segues into WrestleMania. Two grown-ass men, combined weight of 83 million pounds, playing tug-of-war for a cheap, garbage-looking belt. And Brock Lesnar's beard is the same color as his skin, which is really weird. I'm taking a 90-minute break in the middle of WrestleMania to watch The Walking Dead. I, I'm not, so I'll be there. I'll be there. If I don't die before then. I might kill myself before then. Fuck Cody Rhodes. <laughs>